Welcome to our Kelvin Learning Lab Summer Series. My name is Holly and I'm one of the CSNs at Kelvin. Today I'll be showing you how to manage users and custom groups. So our learning objectives today is that by the end of this session, you'll know how to create an admin user, be able to manage user roles, and also create a custom group. So a quick caveat is that what we'll be showing you today is only available to system admins. So if you're not a system admin user and you wanted to make these kinds of changes, um, adding custom groups or uh, changing user roles, please reach out to the system admin at your district. Okay, so let's get started. All right, so I am in the Kelvin Launchpad and most of your users are going to be imported directly into your Kelvin site from your student information system. And there are some cases where a user may not be imported and you need to add them manually or where you need to change a user's role for the purposes of managing the Kelvin site. So we're going to get into that. And the first thing that we're going to need to do within our Kelvin site to manage a user is to get to our settings menu. So we're going to click uh, the to circle at the top right corner here, the avatar with H in it, and click on the settings from the drop down menu. And now you'll notice that I'm in my system admin setting and I have access to different reports or links. And we're going to look for the user that we want to manage today. So let me go to manage users and click this link. And the first thing I'll do is search by their school or district email that would be imported to see if they are already being imported into the system. And I've added that email and I don't see the user. So from here, it's a very simple way to add this user. I'm going to click this green button at the top left here that says plus new admin user. Now, when I click that, I can then add the user's email. I'm going to fill in all the details here for the user that I want to add. And this user is a counselor. And that's really common that we don't see counselors being imported from the SIS because they may not have student um, rostering attached to them. In some cases, there are counselors that have classes rostered to them and they'll be imported. Uh, but for the most part, we see that we need to add them. So I've got the, the um, areas where the red asterisk here tells me those are required fields. I've also added the title of counselor just to let me know. And then you'll notice this roles box down here. When you click on that, that is really important that you assign that um, admin to the specific role. So we have a few roles here that can be given as you're um, adding a user manually. The first is system admin. Now, system admin should be limited to a handful of people at the district level, and they have full access to manage users, manage the system, um, set permissions for other users in your poll site. The district admins, uh, for the most part, those will be imported from your SIS, but in some cases you want to give access to district users. This could be um, the superintendents or directors of student services, people that need to see data across the full district. So they'll see data for every school that's included in the district uh, using the Pulse. And then lastly, we have school staff. And you'll notice that it's giving you a school name next to school staff. So school staff will see uh, data or reports only for users at their school. If the if a report is shared with them, so I'm going to add this counselor Mary to school staff at Douglas Middle. And then you'll notice it populates there. So if this counselor actually worked at several sites, I could go in and add additional sites where Mary may be a counselor so I can give her access to Yoshi and to William. And now you'll see those three schools are designated to Mary. If I hit save. Um, now she has a record. So the other thing that we want to think about is managing user roles. So let's just say um, Mary has been working for the school as, or the schools as a counselor for the past year, um, but she is taking a leave of absence uh, for a medical leave. And I just want to turn off or deactivate Mary from getting into the system while she is not working on site and also reduces her um, emails that she'll receive from us when she's not going to be um, on salary. 
So I can go back and look for her. Let me go ahead and search her email. You'll notice now she has an account. This broken, looks like a broken link, means that she is not being imported from the student information system. So we are manually managing that user. So if I go ahead and click onto her name, and as a system admin, I'll see this dot, dot, dot at the top right of the report, and I can click there. And now I can deactivate that user. And you'll notice her account has been deactivated. So let's just say then she's come back at the beginning of the next school year, and we want to make sure that Mary has access again. It's actually very simple and straightforward, just as we did for deactivating. We just search for her email, or you could search by name, uh, click into that user, and then you'll see this reactivate button here. You can also click the dot, 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 and do reactivate, but I have it already up here at the top of the screen. I've reactivated her. Now she would be able to log in and be able to see any reports that were shared with her. So that is how you would manage users and you can manage those roles. Um, you can go in and change the type of role that Mary has. If she got promoted to be a district admin, I can come in and change those roles right here in this roles box, remove access from those specific schools, and now make her a district admin if needed, and then save that. And now she has district admin access and we'll see reports across the district. Okay, the next thing that we wanted to show you is how to create custom groups. I'm gonna go back to our settings menu by clicking this breadcrumb at the top. And you'll notice I'm back in my system admin reports and settings. And you'll see this link here that says groups. And you'll notice we have a lot of groups created here. This is our demo account, but any of the groups that have this lock next to it are already being pre-populated in Kelvin. So you're not going to be able to change those. Um, so you can add district admins to this group. You can add school staff um, and system admins as you've seen. And then teachers and students, those would also be imported directly from your SIS. So you cannot manually add teachers or students into the system. But these other groups that you see here, so ADC, counselor, advisory, uh, teachers, these are two different types of groups. So we have student groups and we also have staff groups. And these don't have a lock, so these were custom groups that we have created. So let me show you how you'll create your group. And again, it's very straightforward. You'll see this plus new group button at the top of this, this groups page here. When I click on that, I can either create a new student group or a new staff group. So let's just say I want to create a new staff group for my counselors. Um, and maybe I want to call it um, counselors at Boogie Middle. And then I can save that group. And then I can go in and add staff. So now if I already have a list of staff um, that I know want, I want to include, I could either do this import staff from the dot, dot, dot on the top right. And what it will ask is for a list of email addresses one line at a time. So you can copy and paste that list into here, just straight lines of email addresses and then click submit. Or, so we go back, we can also um, click this plus add staff button and search by email. And so I can come in and just add the, the student, or I'm sorry, the staff that should be a part of this. So I can come in and add a couple of my counselors and there we go. And now I have this group of counselors at Boogie Middle. Now the, the use case for this is that if I wanted to share a report just with a specific group or if I wanted to send a pulse just to that specific group. So we've also done this with students. It's, it goes through the same process. You could select just a small list or however large of a list you want of students. Let's just say um, that you are looking at your tier two supports um, for students and you have a, a custom group that you want to create. You can do that as well by following those same steps. So that is how we create a custom group. I wanted to take a moment to also give you some resources um, that will help you with user management and creating custom groups. And we have some help articles and videos that you can use. Um, 
these articles here, so two of the three will, will cover what we talked about today, if you're looking just to read and get a quick refresher on how to do that. And then I've added one extra that we didn't go through, and that is the user permission. So how you can um, manage what users have access to in their Pulse site. Uh, we also have our Kelvin Learning Module on user management, which covers a lot of what we discussed today. And then also it will show you how to create an extension test with a custom student group. And then I've also linked our full Kelvin Learning Modules playlist here for you. So if you'd like to go through the topics to better learn the system, you can do that and train yourself at your own pace. 